Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial video. This is the third video in our Making HTML Reports. This is going to be the last video in the series. So we've seen how to make simple reports um, with very simple CSS. And we've gone into some more detailed uh, CSS where we kind of went through the table and assigned some CSS classes uh, to specific rows based on some values within the cells of that row. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be manipulating our last uh, script. We're going to be changing from having the CSS written in our PowerShell script to the CSS written in an external file. Um, there's a lot of benefits to writing the CSS in a separate file, um, especially in Visual Studio Code. If you're using that as your editor, um, you're going to get the IntelliSense. You're going to get the different highlighting of the text for the different values and the different names. Um, so it might help you actually write some CSS as well. Whereas this, you kind of really have to know what you're typing out in order for it to work. Uh, whereas we, if we use an external file, uh, we don't need that. I'm going to be showing two ways of how to use that external file because uh, there is a very easy way with the convert to HTML uh, to use an external uh, CSS script. But I'm actually going to be telling you guys the disadvantages to those and the scenarios where you wouldn't be able to use that parameter and show you kind of like a workaround for that. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started here. So uh, we're starting with the same script that we had in our last video here. Um, where we're doing the row based CSS. I just want a lot of CSS to be able to show you guys exactly what's going on. So the first thing that we actually want to do is create our CSS file here. So what we're going to want to do is just create a new file. And then here for the name, I like to name my uh, CSS style sheets just style.css. Um, now, of course, if you have multiple CSS styles, maybe for different parts of a website or for different reports, you might want to name the CSS um, file the name of your report that the style applies to, um, but that is completely up to you. I just like to name mine style.css in this case. And once we're here, uh, now eventually I'm just going to copy paste all of these in here because we've already gone over these in the last video. But what I do want to show you guys is what we can actually do in CSS. So if we actually do um, table, and then I believe it was TD, I believe it was, or uh, yeah, TD, and then TH, we can do an open and closing curly bracket. And then if I, and then it was like a border. So here we're already getting the IntelliSense. So it's giving us all the different options that we can do for a border in CSS. And once we do that, it actually gives us right away some options. So if I do a one pixel and then, uh, so again, it kind of auto completes the black. It also gives us some hexadecimal values. And then we can also pick solid here. So it does definitely help gives a little bit more of a visual appearance that everything is working correctly. So all we're going to do actually here is we are just going to cut this out of our PowerShell script and we are going to go ahead and paste that in our style.css. So as you can see, all the color coding came in. We can very easily see all the different options. Everything is a lot easier to read and we know that things are working properly. If something isn't written properly, we're even going to get a little yellow squiggly line saying unknown property. Um, and then maybe, you know, we can notice that, oh, we're missing an R here. So we could just add that in. Um, so there are a lot of beneficial options when using a CSS file compared to just typing it in line in your PowerShell script. So the other thing that we're going to need to do in our script here is I'm also going to change the path to export for this one and we're going to name it external and we're going to use this script to do both methods of using external CSS scripts. So the first thing we're going to want to do, of course, is bring in our CSS. So the way that we could do that here, or at least create a link to the path, we're going to create our CSS path variable. 
And we are going to go ahead and we are going to put that path in there. So we're just going to copy path here. We're just going to paste that in. So now that we have our CSS path, I'm going to leave this head here for now. We're going to actually come back to this one. All we actually need to do once we bring in the CSS path here, all we need to do is at the bottom here in our convert to HTML, we can actually take out this head element altogether and we could put CSS URI as a parameter and then put CSS path. And then what we can also do, uh, as we saw in the last video, when I was trying to put in a title, um, but I had the header object, it wouldn't let me put title in here. But now that we're just specifying a CSS URI, so just a CSS file, we can actually put in our title here. So um, we're going to just put um, parameter past title here. So if we actually run this code here as it is, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to open up that page. There it is. It looks pretty much identical. Uh, there's no real difference between this and the detailed other than the title at the top here because I passed it in through a parameter, whereas this one, it was in our header object. But besides that, um, the hover works, the different color codings all work. Uh, so as you can see, it, it is very, very seamless to actually use a CSS URI and then specify a CSS path. Now, the one disadvantage to using a CSS URI here or a path is if you were creating this HTML to then send by email to somebody and send a nice HTML report uh, via attachment or in the body of the email, an external CSS file will not work unless you are putting that CSS file on the web publicly available or available where that person can at least see it and their computer would be able to reference that CSS file. Um, or the CSS file would be on a network share that that person also has access to. Um, so a big limitation to the CSS URI is the email options for sending this file greatly get reduced. Um, but it is still completely valid if you wanted to use a CSS URI and CSS path. If you were converting to HTML and then putting these HTML files on a web server and you had those CSS files on the web server in that path location, that would work great. Everything would be fine. What I actually prefer to do uh, just gives me a little bit more flexibility and it still uses um, the external CSS is in our header here. Um, so again, we'll lose our option of our title. But in our head here, um, we've emptied out the style. But what we can actually do is do a variable wrapper here. So just do a, a dollar sign open and close parentheses. And then if we do a get content on the path, and we're going to pass in our CSS path here. And then all we need to do is at the bottom is let's remove our title because the title won't work. And we're going to remove our CSS URI. And we are going to do a head. And we are going to put our head variable here. So I'm actually going to show you guys just before I run this, let's actually look at the HTML code for this external.html. So if we do view page source here. This is what happens when you're doing that CSS URI and you're putting the path to the CSS file. So it puts in that link tag. If you've worked with HTML before and CSS, you would uh, you know what this is, um, but it's a link tag. Uh, it is referencing a style sheet. It is a text.css file. And then the href is the target location, which in this case, we have our location towards our CSS file. And that's what loads it in uh, when the page gets loaded. Now, if we actually rerun this script here where we're putting in the head, and again, remember, we're doing the get content path, CSS path. So what this is going to do, this is actually going to load in that external CSS in between these style tags. So let's actually go ahead and let's run this here. And let's go ahead and let's open up that 
So it looks identical again. Uh, you would think that nothing has really changed, but if we view the page source, we can actually see that we actually have our style tags in here and we have all of our CSS elements in here. So it actually worked. So what happens is you can completely use um, Visual Studio's IntelliSense with style.css. Uh, so if you have issues or prefer using uh, the IntelliSense and the color coding, you could do that, create your file, and then when you're loading in the head, and instead of putting the CSS and manually typing them out, just fetch them from the CSS file, and that'll work just as well. Um, and then you could pass that in to the head option in convert to HTML. And this gives you again, the ability to send that by email, send that by attachment by email. You can also put it on a web server. You're not limited. If that web server doesn't have that CSS file, it doesn't matter because it got put into the style tags in the head of the HTML file. So I hope this kind of helps you guys um, use the convert to HTML. This series, uh, we covered quite a bit. Um, I use this a decent amount uh, to create reports that I send to myself or to send to other people on the team. Uh, you could do a variety of different things, and especially um, you can get a uh, something that I do is I get a license report from Microsoft 365. So I'll get all of our tenant licenses, get the number that we have available, get the number that we have used, get the number that we have still free to use. Um, and then I have some highlighting on those. If the number ever gets too low, it kind of highlights it in red so I can know to look at it and potentially put in a purchase order to get more licenses. Uh, so that's one example. Uh, you can also do a bunch of other examples. Uh, like if you don't have too many users, uh, you can maybe do a report on users and seeing uh, when their passwords expires and have the ones that are expiring very soon in red. Uh, but we've also seen a script that we've done here that sends an email directly to that person to let them know that the password's going to expire. Uh, but there are multiple ways to do it. Uh, you can also scan all your different servers for different services and kind of highlight them based on what we've done here, seeing if they're running or not running. Uh, these are just really great reports uh, to run. Um, or if you're interacting with a database and you know some specific data should be in uh, specific entries through uh, regex, or you just know that you know a field shouldn't contain dashes, uh, you can have it highlight those fields and present you a nice report of where those problems are. Uh, the, the endless options are there with convert to HTML to make these reports and make them look really good. So I hope that helped you guys out. Uh, if you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. I will do my best to answer all of them directly, or if it's something that can benefit um, a lot of people, I will be making a video on it as well. Uh, again, thank you guys for watching. Please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.